Right. Example four, what's the slope between negative 1, 8, and 1, 14? So remember, we figured out slope is rise over run. So the amount that we rise is our change in our vertical, so y2 minus y1, our two vertical locations, the change, and our run is our two horizontal locations, their change. So in this case, arbitrarily, let's make this guy the second guy and this guy the first guy. No particular reason, just because, you know, that guy came first, that guy came second. So let's look at it that way. It also makes sense because if we were to draw a picture of it, we'd have something like this, negative 1, 8, and then 1, 14. So it makes sense to think of this guy as the second guy and this guy as the first guy. But as we'll see in a little bit, it actually doesn't matter which one we choose first. So the slope is negative 1, sorry. We want to find out the slope between negative 1, 8, 1, 14. So then m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our second y is 14, so 14 minus our first y is 8, divided by our second x is 1, our first x is negative 1, so minus negative 1, equals 6, 1 minus negative 1, those negatives cancel, we get 6 over 2, equals 3. So our slope is 3. What is the slope going to be if we switch our first and second points, right? So instead, we make this guy 1 and we make this guy 2. Well, we do the same thing, m equals, so it's going to be our new second guy is 8 minus our new second, sorry, first guy is 14 divided by x2, sorry, yeah, our new second guy is negative 1 minus our new first guy is 1. 8 minus 14, negative 6. Negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. Hey, will you look at that? These cancel and we get the exact same thing. So if we switch our first and second points, who we arbitrarily decided to make second and first, does it affect what the slope comes out to be? No, it doesn't. Why? Because the negatives, it introduces negatives on both the top and the bottom, they cancel out. So if we have negatives showing up because of the switch, they're going to show up on both the top and the bottom, so we'll always see cancellation. So it doesn't matter if we plug in our one guy as the first guy, or if we plug in that guy as the second guy. It doesn't matter who gets to be called first and second, as long as we match up our seconds and our firsts have to match up vertically. If we have one point be the second point on the top, the second y coordinate, then it has to also be the second x coordinate has to come first on the bottom as well. So minus, we all have to make sure that the points match up vertically, right? 8 and negative 1, negative 1, comma 8, 14 and 1, 1, comma 14. They match up there. Let's prove this though. If we want to show, if we want to prove that this always comes out to be the case. So to prove this, what we want to show is that it doesn't matter if it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 versus y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, right? If we swap the location of who gets to come first, who gets to be more on the left in the fraction, it doesn't matter who gets to be more on the left or who's more on the right. That's what we want to show. So how do we prove it? Well, let's start off with this guy here. So we'll have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, we want to be able to get that to start looking like this thing. And we say, well, y2 minus y1, oh, hey, that's pretty much the same thing, but it's got a negative introduced to it, right? So how could we introduce some negatives here? Well, let's write it again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can multiply it by 1, right? Wait, wait, what? Well, yeah, 1, right? I can multiply anything by 1 anytime I want. You can't stop me from multiplying by 1, right? I can take any number and multiply by 1, and it has no effect. So everything is equal to just itself times 1. Now, the cool thing about math is there's a lot of ways to say the number 1, right? I can say 1 as 1, but I could also say it as 1 over 1. Or I could say it as 5 over 5. Or I could say it as negative 1 over negative 1. 
And that's how we introduce our negatives, right? And this is also the idea that's coming along when we change denominators, is we introduce by multiplying the same thing on the top and the bottom. So we multiplied by negative 1 on the top and negative 1 on the bottom. Now notice, since we're multiplying the top, we're not just multiplying the first part of the top, we're multiplying the whole top. So because it's multiplication, it's going to apply to this fraction as if it started in parentheses. So times negative 1 over negative 1, y2 minus y1 times negative 1 becomes negative y2 plus y1 over negative x2 plus x1. And hey, this thing right here is just the exact same thing as this thing right here. We've just swapped the location. It's now instead of negative y2 plus y1, it becomes y1 minus y2, what we're a little more used to seeing. Cool. So we managed to prove that it doesn't matter what order we slot it into using this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula. It doesn't matter because it's going to wind up spitting out the same answers. But the really key idea to think about when we're talking about slope is it is the rise over the run. It is the rate of change, how quickly the line is changing. All right. Hope you learned a bunch here. Hope it's been a great refresher and everything's really clicking into place because we'll be using this stuff a whole bunch later down the road. All right. See you at educator.com later. Bye.